been a pleasure this, thus far. Or, but how do you, in, in this specific situation, especially when you've got young quarterbacks, how do you balance your work with the tight ends and, and still wanting to see as much as you can of the whole offense? Yeah, it, it's really easy. I mean, we got a great staff. Uh, bringing Glenn on board, we've known each other for 20 years. We think the same. We have the same expectations of quarterback play. So, you know, it's it's easy for me to go in and out of the tight end room to the quarterback room to make sure that we're maintaining a relationship because that's crucial because I'm going to have to communicate to those guys, you know, throughout the game. Uh, it's been a, a very easy transition to this point. Zach Coach Rule um, said that you know having you coach the tight ends will help them be more involved on the field. Just from your point of view, how, how is that going to happen? Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I think that uh, it, it'll be good for them to have the play caller in the room. I think the way that I'll teach will probably. Uh, expand their brains a little bit, you know, because I'm not just teaching the tight end. I'm teaching the tight end a lot of times like the quarterback. Uh, and so I think that'll help them. Uh, but it won't be like magically because I'm, I'm going to try to get them the ball because I'm coaching them now. I think just naturally year two of the offense, uh, I think our quarterback play is going to improve. I think that if the quarterback play improving, then the pass game is going to improve. So everybody gets more touches. So I think it's just layer after layer of development as coaches, players, and program. Do you think Fedoni can go after you know having one year where he had a fully healthy season and now building off of that? Uh, you know, I think he's going. He's he's set mentally and physically to have a, a you know a really good year. I don't want to sit here and jinx him and say a breakout year, but we have a lot of high expectations for him. Uh, you know, having the pleasure of watching him practice the first five times. I mean, he's moving around really, really, really well. He has a great understanding of our offense. Uh, he's getting a lot of balls thrown at him. He's catching the ball well. He's running after the catch. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready for him to take that next step, and I think he's ready to take the next step. You mentioned it was pretty seamless with Glenn coming in. What was it like those first days you got in the meeting room back with him again and, and united in that way? Uh, it's, it's easy. I mean, like he'll tell you, like I'm a little bit of the crazy one off the wall when he's the calm one. You know, I'm the yin, he's the yang. Uh, so it, it was easy. It's like I mean, we've been together and coached together now for I think five or six years and known him forever. So it's it's been really easy. Been fun. Where should this offense get better? Uh, we're going to throw the ball. We have to be able to throw the ball. Uh, I think we're always going to find a way to run the ball. But as you saw last year, I mean, you can run the balls, you know, well. But there's going to come times when you have to win a game. You have to throw the ball. So uh, we've really been focusing on just our passing game and our pass protection and our route running and just all all the concepts of throwing the football. For incoming freshmen, how far ahead are guys like Dylan and Daniel just with their footwork, their, their knowledge of the game of football, with just the training they've had before they got here? Uh, you talk about just being mid-year guys yeah. uh, and how far along they are. Uh, it's amazing. We were watching them uh, yesterday or two days ago, practice four, completing a bunch of uh, completing a bunch of balls. And you sit there and you're like, you, know, you forget sometimes that that's – that's Dylan and Danny's fourth practice in college going against these guys. And they're still able to have the poise and the footwork and the timing in their brains and the knowledge of the system already to get completions because it's hard to do, especially against our defense, moving around like they do. So I think that they're, uh, they're ahead of schedule. And, uh, you know, the good thing about those guys is they, they're, they're competitors and they work their butts off, you know, on the field and off the field to make sure when they do get on the field, they understand what's going on and where everybody's going to be. See, look at the Wide receivers, how have some of those you know new additions, you know Banks, Nair, and some of the freshmen kind of fit in and, and help that? Yeah, out? it's a great room, and uh, you know, kind of like we were talking about coaching the tight ends, like quarterbacks, Garrett coaches those guys, like they're you know they, they don't just learn routes, they learn the system and they learn the why we're calling plays. So I think you know that room's got to take a step, and they've already taken a step this spring. I think just the depth we added. Uh, with our two older guys that we brought in and then the freshman, mid-year freshman coming in and then D-Bell being able to be activated this year. I think, you know, we've got good depth, uh, got a lot of good speed, a lot of guys that can make plays, and they've shown that thus far. So it's good to see. What stood out about the running back room and, and how that competition's going? Uh, we don't have the full allotment out there yet, but I think that, you know, they all, just like I'll tell you every year, they all have their different traits. You know, some guys catch the ball, some guys run the ball, some guys run through you, some guys run around you. So. Uh, again, we've been really, you know, focusing on throwing the football a little bit more this spring uh, thus far, and then the first two helmets being in, in helm, or just first two practices being in helmets, we haven't got a lot of full contact play. So I think we'll be able to tell a lot about the running backs after we get our first live scrimmage and we see who can break a tackle and who can make a guy miss. Who among the allotment do you have available right now? Uh, we have Dante, we have Emmett, 
Uh, we have we have RJ. We have. I hate when I have to name names. I'll forget people. But you know, we're just holding a couple out just for just for precautionary reasons. But nobody's out just you know due to tour injury where they couldn't play. It's just being cautious. What do you what do you think of Dante's game so far? I mean, he's a he's a physical runner, like very 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 physical runner downhill. Like even in thud, he tries to run through your face. Uh, you know, so he's shown that the, the last practice had a couple good runs just from a physicality standpoint. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned Demetrius. We've been, been hearing about him. Um, what do you what do you have to do to get him involved, and, and what can he do if he's involved? Uh, I mean, he's he's shown it out there already. Just he can catch the ball, and then what he does after he catches it is is he's got a special trait. Uh, he's a very smart kid. He works really hard. Uh, he knows his he knows his posi- he knows multiple positions, so he can go and and get a lot of snaps that way. But I think he just has to keep playing football, stay healthy, and keep playing, and he'll be fine. You, you scrimmage Saturday? Uh, that's a coach rule question. I don't know. I just go day by day, but I'm sure we'll get a little action on Saturday. Yeah, get a little action. What your role? What are you looking for early in the spring? Uh, taking care of the football, number one, the first priority. Uh, two, you know, don't beat ourselves before the ball is snapped with procedure penalties. Being able to line up correctly, play as hard as we possibly can, know when do your job, and play with great effort. Where do you where do you think you guys were you know not half bad throwing the ball last year? Like, was there a component of the pass game that you were like, well, I mean, it's not as bad as it could have been, and it was decent? Uh, I think that we, I think we threw the deep ball at times well. Uh, you know, off our play action stuff, we had a couple of those deep shots middle of the end of the year. Uh, but just you know, to, the total aspect of, of throwing the ball just from quick game to down the field shots to moving the pocket, you know, that's something that we got to improve on all facets of the game. I'm curious about the, the quick game. You, you guys didn't do a, a ton of it last year. How, how much more have you worked on that and how effective can it be for an offense if they can get that throw out there and just get five, it, six it yards? It can be really effective. You know, we talk about just getting the ball in play, like just throw it, catch it, get the ball in play and get the, you know, get the ball moving and not just having to rely on the run game all the time and get it to those guys in space and see if they can make a make a guy miss and create an explosive. It was like, yeah, huge. I think that they all have their different, you know, types. Like you have inline blockers, guys that play off the ball, that kind of play that fullback type tight end role. And then you got guys like, you know, Thomas that can do a little bit of everything. But, you know, uh, Nate and Luke are, are – we're going to rely on them very, you know, a lot to do a lot of different things. You know, playing in 12 personnel, 13 personnel at times, they got to know receiver positions, and those guys have played a lot of football and been, you know, productive when called upon. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.
Okay. That's like Dirk Diggler. Yeah. <coughs> Five practices. Uh, what would you say your overall assessment of the three scholarship quarterbacks is? I'm, I'm excited about where they're at. Um, I think Coach Rule's done a fantastic job with uh, the implementation of reps. You know, as you guys are hearing about, you know, kind of our spring league, if you will. You know, we're pushing, you know, 100 and 100 plus reps, 150 reps for those guys in five practices. So it's been fantastic in that way. And, you know, we kind of talked about last time is how do you get to be a better player as you play? So they're getting a ton of reps. They're getting a lot of uh, variables. You know, Tony does a great job on defense with, you know, all the variables that he gives us. So each day we're learning a little bit. Uh, you know, an installation sometimes meets the installation, right? Meaning, you know, we're running a play that might not necessarily be ideal versus a look, but I think it's great for the quarterback in the fact that you really have to play your rules. You know, what are they giving us and how do I respond if it isn't necessarily the ideal look? How have you seen those, the young guys in particular, respond to those situations? I think positive, and, and for, for the simple fact, I think they're coachable and they're open to be to learning. I think that's, you know, the, the first step of getting better, you know? Um, like I say, we, you know, defensively, we're not, we don't necessarily a, a universal defense. There's a lot of different exotic looks, so it's not necessarily your traditional uh, windows a lot of the time. So, but I've, I've been excited about their coachability and their application from the meeting to the to the field, you know, and then the retention, right? The retention piece is is the next element as far as you know what are we talking about as far as those corrections and are they getting those done on the practice field? There's a test for an 18 year old to lead some guys who are four or five years older. How do you see him do it, doing early on with that component? Yeah, I think I think I'm, I'm I'm in a good place with it. You know, and like we talked about last time, I think it's just the expectation of being successful when you're out there. You know, having the confidence of putting that work in the meeting room, and then once you step out there, you know what you're doing. You can react and and process it. You know, in an ideal, uh, timely fashion, and make a play. What's your early impression of, of working with Heinrich and maybe some things in particular uh, he's looking to improve on? Uh, I think it's I think the passing piece, right? We've talked about the completion percentage and trying to get that up. We talked about mechanics and elbow and arm angles and, and those type things. Those are constant, you know, things we're talking about. And then again, the application from the meeting room corrections to the field, I think, has been good. Um, again, we're trying to continue to work through the concise decision making as far as when I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be. And I, I think we're in a good place like that. And again, we're getting better and better, hopefully, each and every day. There's obviously a lot of noise surrounding the quarterback room. How have you seen them kind of handle all of that outside? Of I've been pleased with the room. I think it's a fantastic room and the fact that they're uh, very cohesive. They're working together. Um, they're talking through different scenarios. Um, hey, this is what I saw here. This is what I saw here. What do you think about this? Um, I love the fact they're asking questions. You know, sometimes you set, you know, set in a room and you don't want to be the guy that's asking a question. I think they're asking a question which stimulates more conversation for other people that they might have that same question that they didn't ask. So all those things I think are positive and helps the room build. With, with Dylan, what kind of traits have you seen in him that come naturally that, you know, aren't necessarily things that you can coach a guy to do? Well, he's got nat he's a natural passer, as is Danny. They're both natural passers. They got great rotation as far as upper body. They use their lower lower half really good, which creates some arm strength. Comes off their hand, they throw a really catchable ball, which I think it goes, you know, underappreciated sometimes. Um, I love the fact that both of them again they're creating that application from the meeting room to the classroom and really being coachable to to getting better each day. How are the three teams that set up with each of them leading, especially the two of them, but well, they're all young, but how have you seen that maybe benefit them in a way? Because they're not only getting all those reps, but they're kind of having to then also lead those groups very quickly. No question. I, and I think that's part of the strategy as far as creating that leadership uh, mentality. Uh, you know, guys that don't necessarily work with or have, you know, experience with, that they have that social dynamic. You know, when f things are going good, they're celebrating together. When things are, are low, you know, you might have to pick them up. So I think having that dynamic with people that you aren't working with necessarily on a down-in, down-out basis, I think is a positive, and it's, it's shown to be a, a good thing for the first, you know, week and a half. We have a guy that started last year at Harburg. Um, 
Do you talk to him just a little bit differently? Because it, it, it's pretty clear he's again in a quarterback competition, even though he kind of earned the starting job. What, what, what do you say to him about staying motivated um, despite being in a competition with two players who've never taken a college snap? Well, I, he's self-motivated. I, th I think that's a that's an attribute of all those guys. He's self-motivated. I don't think I have to motivate him. He wants to be good. He wants to continue to improve. So uh, I respect that out of him. I, I. Uh, you know, we ask questions all the time. He he gives me feedback on maybe his thoughts last year, why this happened, why that happened. Uh, so that's been nice perspective that way. But he's definitely a, a self-starter, self-motivated, and he's the one pushing himself to get better for sure. The other question about the two young quarterbacks. So both of them were elite 11, and I, that probably doesn't mean much to you. But they were, you know, considered among the best in the country. When you get guys and then you the first time you have to tell them, Maybe there's something that you do that you need to improve. How does that conversation go? Like, how do, how, do you, how do you communicate with somebody who's been told for years that they're great? Actually, you need to fix something. Um, I, I, think it, I think it's a natural course. I mean, obviously, when you start practicing and you understand the speed of the game and how, you know, the unique defenses and how to, to attack a defense, I think that in itself will take a step back and be like, hey, how is the best way to do this? Um, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to be around some guys in my past that have, you know, I've coached a certain different way. I think we can utilize those, you know, past cut-ups or this technique or this thought process as far as a read. So I think there's a variety of things that you can use to show them that this is the best way. And then that being said, there's no ego involved. If something they like better or, hey, I feel more comfortable with this as a coach, shame on me if I'm not listening to that. So I think that dynamic, that, that conversation is, is ongoing and whatever the best technique, process, progression there is, let's do it. Is it too early to start looking for someone to separate themselves five practices in, or, or are you looking for that? Not looking for that at all. Each time you step on the field, we're expecting you to, edu uh, to, to execute, and I think that's the perspective uh, going in, and, and we're no rush for that. I think the, the process of getting reps is the emphasis, and, and we're getting that accomplished right now. Well, how about for you, five practices in, just being back in the college game and being here and coaching these quarterbacks? How has it been? It's been great. It's really it's been great. You know, you love the energy, the enthusiasm, the you know, uh, it, you know, bouncing from play to play. We're not getting enough plays. Hurry up, hurry up. You know, do this, do that. Uh, it's been fantastic. And you know, each day you come in the building, the energy that those guys bring to you, and you try to bring to them. You know, it makes coming to work every day. You know, a lot of fun. How does that change your approach knowing, you know, you were working with professionals, now you work with college kids. Do you feel like they're more like sponges, they can soak in information more? Where pros are kind of a back and forth dialogue? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe in some ways, but at the end of the day, even at that level, they're looking for information to be better. You know, I think at the end of the day, in a meeting, you, the more information that you can give them, to be a better player, they're receptive to that. So, uh, you know, it might be a little different information that you're given, um, but for the most part, it's a similar dynamic uh, as far as the information, receiving of information, I would say. Are the expectations that you have as far as leadership in the locker room, away from the field, um, you know, encouraging teammates to come out to, to throw, watch film, are they the same for a young quarterback that you would have for a guy who's a junior or senior in your program? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I, I think it's the same from their perspective, too, which is more exciting. You know, a lot of times those are the guys that are taking the leadership, even as the young quarterbacks like we're talking about. They're taking the ownership of getting some extra throws. You know, it's not something that I'm, you know, uh, talking about so much as opposed to them initiating that you know, situation and getting some extra work with them. So that's an exciting, you know, environment when you have the young guys really pushing everybody to be better. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks coach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll start the quarterbacks with Tyner. What's it been like working with Coach Thomas so far? Yeah, Coach Thomas, I think it's a new approach um, in some ways and in other ways, you know, he's been a part of Coach Rule staff before, so it's completely the same. Um, obviously, it's a transition, and those are never you know, seamless, but um, I think he's really intelligent and has a lot of experience, so I think that will help all of us. What are some of the new things that he's brought to the table compared to 
your previous quarterback coaches? Yeah, uh, I think um, you know Coach Thomas is more um, quarterback priority. Um, you know, working with Matt Ryan, spending a lot of years as a quarterback coach, um, he's got different insights into uh, mechanics, footwork, um, tweaking little things. So, you know, that's been that's been helpful for. Um, for me, I know, and I think for those two young guys as well, um, developing them. I know the room last year was really close to QBs. Like, uh, obviously, you're starting over with some new guys in there. What, what's it been like, just uh, you know, getting going with that? Yeah, I think those two came in, and they're you know they've hopped right on board with you know how it's been since I got here with Adrian, um, Matt Masker, all those guys, and it's been a really it's been a really fun room to be a part of uh, for the last couple of years. And, you know, when those guys came in, I told them, you know, this is this is how I'd like it to stay is, you know, we're all helping each other grow and off the field. You know, we're going golfing. We're hanging out with each other, um, you know, trying to trying to grow our relationships. What have you learned about um, the mechanics? What are you working on there? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the things last year that resulted in, you know, accuracy, um, I wouldn't say issues, but, you know, just some things that even against Michigan, um, batted balls, you know, dropping the elbow down a little bit. So, you know, that's something that Coach Thomas and I have been working on, and I'm going to continue to work on um, this spring into the summer. And I think that will help a lot with, you know, some of those um, issues that I had last year that um, hopefully just improve. Sometimes when golfers retool their swing, it takes them a while to, to get the ball to go where they want. Is that what you're going through right now as you work through your mechanics throwing the thing? A little bit, yeah. And, you know, I was actually, that's a funny analogy because I was talking to uh, my godfather yesterday and he was talking about that too where, you know, I was saying, you know, it's funny, like I've been working this whole winter on, you know, fixing just like these little things. But then you get into the heat of battle and you go back to what you know. Um, and so, you know, when we go into 11 on 11 sometimes, you know, I go back to some of those bad habits. And so a lot of that's just trying to get reps outside of 11 on 11 and being intentional of when I can um, in that live period of knowing um, this is what I need to work on. And so working on those things, you know, that's a blessing being second year in this offense. Um, some of these plays I could run with my eyes closed, call them with, you know, 95,000 screaming. So. Um, that's a blessing. Physically, what have you learned just about playing the position at this level? This, the, the beating you maybe took last year and how that's maybe changed your approach with, with how you want to play going forward? Yeah, I mean, it hit Illinois last year and I was starting to feel all those hits racking up. Um, you know, just some little injuries that all of a sudden they blew up into bigger ones that resulted in me, you know, not being at the top speed that I should be um, to have the explosive plays that I had earlier in the year. And, you know, every now and then, you know, I'd bust one out like Michigan State. Um, but I think I wouldn't say that, it, you know, I want to change my style of play. I still want to be a physical downhill runner that punishes, but at the same time being smarter with my body, knowing when um, to be that runner and when maybe, you know, if it's if I get the first down, maybe just get out of bounds. Don't take an unnecessary hit. So I think all that experience from last year will carry over and um, have even more this year. What, what do you think of some of those receivers you're throwing to? You know, thanks and Air being here. We've heard a lot about Demetrius Bell too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Isaiah and um, um, obviously D Bell. You know, he's he, he was here last year, second year in the offense. He's grown a lot, and then. Um, you know, the two older guys, those guys are really big, really fast, and, um, you know, great ball skills. So um, it's hard to miss them, even with our offensive line. You can kind of see them just through the cracks, and that makes it easier on us, you know, anticipating windows. Um, and even, I mean, obviously jump balls with big guys like that are a lot easier. But, um, yeah, I mean, those guys have, bring a lot of experience as well, which helps our room or our quarterback room, you know, especially with – you know, a younger room, but then also the wide receiver room. What's your, what's your perspective on the way that um, the coaching responsibilities shifted, having a, a new quarterbacks coach, having Sat, who is still a part of your conversations, but isn't coaching your position? How do you feel like it can impact the offense? I think for us, it just it kind of feels like we just doubled the amount of coaching like that we have because 
And we still go to Coach Sad a lot. He's our offensive coordinator. He calls the plays. He's talking to us. Uh, but at the same time, we have Coach Thomas now, who's like another, who's like another coach. Um, and so, I mean, he is another coach. Um, I mean, he's he's right there with us. But you know, I wouldn't say like Sat's presence in our room has gone away at all, just because he's gone to tight ends. Um, he's still our offensive coordinator, and he still has a lot of input into what we do and how we do it. So. Um, I think having both those guys, and I mean, they're both have so much experience. Um, I think that helps us. What, what's it like being the old guy in the room, and, and how is that? I mean, you're also the returning starter. And, yeah. You know, we're talking to all three of you today, not just you. So what's that balance like, being not only the person that's the mentor for these guys, but also competing against them? Yeah. Um, it, it's crazy. Like, I felt I feel like I just got here. I was, you know, learning from Adrian a year ago. Um, so being the old guy now, you know, I've learned a lot from Adrian, Casey, Jeff, you know, watching those three guys that um, were the old guys for a little bit. But, you know, at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm not going to change who I am. Um, I, I'm not going to take myself too seriously. But you know, at the same time, I have to know when, when it is time to step up and be the older guy, when to lead. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's weird, and you know, it's a little bit smaller quarterback room than we had last year at this time, so it's a little easier to develop relationships. And you know, it's nice having um, Jack Walking and Luke Longball. You know, those guys were here last year, and you know, relying on them as well. Those guys both, you know, they've they've seen a lot of reps, um, and so they, you know, if I if I forget something, you know, I know I can go to them. And you know, Dylan and Danny are starting to come along too, to the point where, you know, if you know, maybe, you know, we have a question during a meeting or something. I can, you know, hey, did you get that or something? You know, those guys are those guys are really mature. I'm really proud of them for how they've approached um, this spring and this winter. So, Heinrich, what have you learned about those guys in those off the field hangouts that you talked about trying to build that chemistry? Yeah, I mean, they're both just 18, 19 year old guys. Um, you know, we, you know, go golfing. Like I said, just you know, having a good time. Um, you know, when we're out of here, you know, we all try to just relax, have fun, and you know, whatever it is. You know, they're they're really fun guys to be around, and um, you know, can't wait to grow relationships with both of them. I just have to ask, what led to the Rattlesnake Boys winning day one? That's your team that you're leading. So, what led to that? Yeah. So, I mean, the Rattlesnake Boys. We've been. You know, it's been complimentary football. You know, it's it's tough because you don't see your defense because obviously, you know, you're on other fields. And so it's kind of a surprise when you all come together at the end and you ask them, hey, how'd y'all do? Because it's not like regular where you're watching them. So it's been really, really complimentary, you know, day one. Um, we had a decent day on offense and they, they were lights out. Um, and then, you know, I can't spoil the results for what happened uh, Tuesday or today, but, you know, it's just been back and forth, us lifting each other up. So um, I think hopefully that continues and Rattlesnake boys can come out on top. Daniel next, and then Dylan will be in a few minutes. Further <coughs> questions?
What's been the, for you, what's been the most challenging part about just the transition from high school to college? Um, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is really just the playbook. Um, but I do think our coaching staff has done a really good job of kind of getting me prepared and getting ingrained into it. But um, I think that's just the biggest difference from, from level to level is just the depth and um, the amount of checks and things you got to know on offense, um, which is definitely important for an offense to have. But it's, it's definitely a big adjustment for sure. I think that's been probably the biggest challenge so far in spring ball. Kind of welcome to college football moments yet, where the defense was a little faster, or, or something was different that you kind of experienced. Um, I don't necessarily know if there's like a moment. Um, I mean, you always hear every time you go up to the next level, um, whether it be like high school to college, call to the NFL, like the speed is different. And I definitely noticed that right off the bat. Um, but I think it's it's been cool to kind of go through practices. And I feel like really every practice, I can kind of feel like you're starting to get ingrained into it and um, kind of get with the speed of of the guys that have already been here. So I, I think that's um, something I've noticed for sure. But I don't know if I necessarily have like a specific moment. Yes, what, just a, what aspect of, of the things that you're asked to do are, are you feeling most comfortable with right now? Um, I, I really like, we've put in a lot of RPO stuff. Um, and I feel like that's, that's something I've been kind of executing well during practice and that I'm comfortable with. Um, kind of have a background of doing that in high school as well. So, um, but yeah, I, I really like um, the RPO th um, install that we put in. Um, so far this spring, and I've been, been comfortable with that. What's your early impression of uh, working with Coach Thomas and just some of the, the tools he's given you? Coach Thomas has been great. Um, really, right off the bat, you could notice that, you know, I, when he got hired, I saw he was in the, in the NFL, and you could just tell his, his ball knowledge is just um, really high. He's got a lot of experience at a lot of levels, so he knows a lot, and I feel like, you know, before I got here to now, like, I'm a completely different player as far as, um, knowledge of the game of football, and, and a lot of that's come from Coach Thomas, so he's been great. You're probably used to this from high school when you were playing with guys who were older than you when you first were mm -hmm. starting, but what, what's it like trying to lead at the position that has to lead with guys? Some guys are 22, 23 years old around you. Yeah, you know, um, when you're kind of put in that position, it's kind of just something you got to do. Um, but, but what I'd say is I think we have a really great group of older classmen that have kind of helped bring along some of the guys in our class and, and not kind of pushed them away, but embraced them. Um, and I feel like they've, they've done that with me and, and, and Dylan as well, you know, all the quarterbacks. So it's, um, I don't think it's been as challenging as I may have expected to be. Um, but no, we have a great group of older guys that have, that have helped us kind of come along. So. How do two of you freshman quarterbacks help each other? Just competition. Um, I really think you know, I have a lot of confidence in myself. Obviously, Dylan does as well. He's a great player. So um, not only him, but Heinrich, all three of us, I think really do a good job of pushing each other. And I think we've all gotten a ton of reps this spring so far. So it's, it's been good to kind of see what one guy's doing, not only learn from each other and help each other, but also compete and try to you know, do better than the guy next to you. So. With, with, go ahead. With so much hype around Dylan, I mean, do you come in here as kind of like the underdog on, under the radar mentality, or what mentality do you take heading into the spring? Um, I'm sure some people could look at it like that, but really I'm just worried about you know, being the best player that I can be and, and competing every day. Um, you kind of hear it, you know, there's a lot of hype around a lot of guys that came in. Um, I'm sure some of the upperclassmen have had the same thing, but um, we got guys who are unranked, walk-ons, all the way to five stars that have played on this team. And I think that's something that, you know, it's great to have in high school, but when you get to the next level, um, it's just important to, to work hard and, and compete every single day. And I'm confident, you know, the, the best guy is always going to play. We want what's best for the team. So um, I don't really look at it like that. You know, me and Dylan, you know, we're, you know, we have a good relationship already and really just push each other to get better every day. What kind of opportunity is it for you guys, though, to get these kind of reps? I mean, usually freshmen coming out of high school don't get the ones and two type reps mm -hmm. right away, and you guys are getting that right now. Yeah, yeah I think it's huge. Um, I don't really know what to expect as far as what reps we're going to be, um, but kind of like first day, they're kind of putting us out there, uh, getting a ton, ton of reps with where to be the ones, the twos, and kind of mixing it up with ones and twos are kind of mixed up in some groups. So um, I think it's been super valuable, and it, it's really helped us kind of progress along quicker than, than maybe not being able to get those types of reps. So I think it's been great so far. These five practices really confirmed that you did made the right decision in enrolling early, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's something I've wanted to do um, ever since I wanted to play in college football. You know, I went to Bellevue West, and I remember kind of Jay Ducker was a guy who did that um, early on, and then really every year at Bellevue West kind of had people do that after. So it's something I planned on doing um, for a while, and I definitely made the right choice. You know, I feel like I'd definitely be a little behind if I came in the summer, so uh, it's definitely the right decision. What's the thing that you feel like you're doing pretty well so far? And then what's the thing where you're like, yeah, I got to catch up? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, like I said earlier, like the speed of the game is different, but I'm kind of proud of the way I've been able to process um, for the most part, especially with 
uh, the type of defense that, that Coach White teaches with so much movement. They're not running the same coverage twice in a row average. So you, so you really kind of got to be on your toes as far as doing that. Um, but something I, I feel like I need to improve in um, is just kind of knowing what, they're, what the defense is going to be in you know, pre-snap because they do so much. It keeps us on our heels, like I said. So um, still got a lot to learn. Um, but I feel, I'm proud of the way I've been able to process for the most part. So. Is it is it uh, is there any kind of nice feeling for you to have Davon along for the ride with you? Um, and then and what's it like the dynamic among all of the such a big number of, of uh, early enrollees who are here this semester? Yeah, I think it's always cool to, um, to have a guy that you know and are kind of close with already. Um, we already have a little bit of a connection, obviously playing in high school for four years. So um, you know, I think I kind of noticed it the first day. You know, I ended up hitting on like on like a route to the outside. I didn't even really feel like. I noticed it was him, but it just felt natural. So some of that kind of stuff is is natural when you have a connection with a guy already. But um, overall, I feel like the day that that this early enrollee group got here, um, we've just really had a really tight knit group from the start. Um, so I just really think I've gotten close to to all those guys for sure. What's your impression of just the receiving group in general that you've been able to work with? Really talented, uh, you know, top to bottom. I think um, so many guys I've never thrown with before. Um, like some guys. You know that are on my on my team for the competition um, that I've got to kind of hook up with more is Jaden Doss is really talented. Isaiah Nayer is really talented, a big big target. Um, been love loving throwing to Nate Borgacher, really good big target, sure hands. So, um, but all around, I feel like we have a really really great group of receivers that um, are going to be able to make a lot of plays for us. You should still technically be a senior this spring. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you're still balancing? Will you go back and like walk for graduation? Is there anything that you're kind of like? still doing in addition to being here? Yeah, I mean, not much I've been doing now, but I am planning on going back and walking for graduation. Um, but, but yeah, really, I've just been, just been locked in on, on being here and um, embracing everything that comes with being a college athlete. So. Are you go to prom? Uh, I'm not planning on it, no, no. <laughs> no. Appreciate you guys.
Obviously, played a lot of football. What's been the, the most interesting or challenging thing for you on this transition of coming into a new place like Nebraska? I think the biggest thing is just catching up to the speed of the game. Um, players are moving faster. The level of competition is a lot, lot better. Um, you know, the players are moving at a lot, lot faster pace. So, you know, just just catching up to the speed, I think, is the biggest thing. And then, you know, just understanding what what our defense is trying to do and, and attack that. As you uh, develop chemistry with your wide receivers, <clears throat> there's a lot of wide receivers on the mm -hmm. roster. I mean, how's that process kind of gone, developing chemistry with each and all of them? It's been a lot of fun. You know, they come in every day, work really hard, study their tape, and, you know, they go out on the field and they, and they make a lot of big plays. You know, they take, take the pressure off of us and they go and catch the ball when they need to, get open to routes when they, you know, when their number's called. So it's been a lot of fun. They work really hard and, you know, off the field, they're a really good group of guys to be around. Dylan, how, how have you gone about setting expectations for yourself? Was it a matter of you know, month by month? Did you do it? Did you break it up before the spring? Now in the spring, after the spring, or do you look more long term? Uh, I just try to take it day by day. Um, you know, we had the spring right now, so just you know, really focus on each day of spring ball um, and take every day as its own, and then um, you know, not try to think too far ahead. You know, I want to get the connection down with the guys um, and really just be around them. You know, just get to know them, get comfortable with them, and um, that's the main focus. What do, you, what do you find in early that you're having, that you're feeling comfortable with, that you're having success with here, out here on, on the practice field or, or, you know, in the offices? Yeah, I think um, just connecting with my teammates. Uh, the, you know, the O-line does a great job of, you know, getting protection set um, where they need to be, um, you know, kind of guiding me that way. And, you know, my, my running backs run the ball really hard. You know, that, that's the quarterback's best friends, a good run game. So I think that's been been very impressive of what we've done. And, um, yeah, I'm just, just, you know, following the lead of the, of the older guys and then, um, you know, start to find my, my own voice. What the rules said right away, we're going to give you guys a ton of reps this spring. I mean, how fired up were you to just take all that on to, to get all the action to get in right away? It's a lot of fun. You know, you, you just want to play football. Um, Getting a lot of reps is really good, especially for, you know, me and Danny, you know, being young guys coming in. So it's been nothing but fun in the quarterback room. We gel really well, um, play golf together, play cards. I mean, we're a really cr close group, and, and I don't see us – we'll get more, way more closer. You feel like you've done pretty well so far, and what's something you feel like you got to catch up on? Yeah, I think um, – I think creating explosive plays has been um, – you know, probably one of the, one of the better things I've done, um, and I think something I got to catch up on is you know the protections, understanding <clears throat> where where my answers are and things like that. So uh, I think it's just just the scheme wise catching up. Um, you know, obviously having Heinrich being able to teach us the scheme. Um, very lucky to have him in the room and and have some experience on the field. It's creating an explosive plays. You mean are we talking about just the deep ball? No, no. I, I think just getting the ball in the space with our guys that can run. Uh, it could be a five-yard pass, but, you know, we got some juice on the, on the edges, so our guys can turn it in 20, 25-yard gain. So, yeah, it, it's just getting the ball to our playmakers. With the amount of reps that you're getting, how have you seen that maybe, like, the benefit of working in the teams that you have? You have these three different teams, you're getting a lead, so how do you maybe balance, like, getting all those reps, also having to lead, all of those pieces? I think it's unique to have three teams the way they did um, to, to be able to, you know, kind of take – the big team and break it up into three different teams and, you know, kind of lead that way. You're going against all the uh, older defensive guys. So being able to, you know, just, just play against guys that have experience is only going to make us better on the offensive side. We have a we have a lot of young guys and we have a lot of old guys. So just catching everybody up to the speed, I think, you know, taking the young guys with me, you know, being comfortable with them and then, you know, just kind of following in suit with what the older guys have um, already established here. Do you anticipate been wearing like, a green all spring, or do you think the quarterbacks will get live every once in a while this spring? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I couldn't tell you what we're going to do, but whatever coach will decide, we'll, we'll be ready. So what's it been like living here? Just people recognizing you, probably showing too much love? Uh, Nebraska's a special place, and it's always been like that. And uh, I never take it for granted <clears throat> how, how good our fans are. And... Um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I try to be around my guys as much as possible, take them out to go eat, um, play Madden. So it's been good. I love living here. Um, not a lot of distractions and a lot of ball and being around your guys. We've now heard a little bit. We all like to play golf, cards. Who who's leading in that? Like, who's the best golfer? Who's maybe best at Madden? I'm curious who's leading. Um, I mean, Madden's fun. People don't like playing the quarterbacks. Just, I mean, they think we can cheat. But um, I couldn't tell you in Madden, but golf between the quarterbacks, it's pretty even right now. I think no one's have yet to separate themselves. But uh, yeah, we we just play. 2v2, and then we'll scramble and see who can score the best that hole. Found some guys on this offense that can catch the ball um, that you just, for whatever reason, had a natural had a natural uh, connection with. Mm -hmm. are, there, are there guys out there in particular at the receivers or tight ends who, who you just found yourself to click with right away? Um, I wouldn't say naturally. You know, we put a lot of work in in January and February. Um, but to your point, I think. Um, you know, Demetrius Bell, Jalen Lloyd, those two guys. Th those are two guys on my spring lead team, so I've been able to get a lot of rest with them. You know, also Isaiah Nair, Jamal Banks, and, you know, really the whole group, we really come together and, and made it a point that we're going to go make plays for each other. Uh, we're going to do whatever it takes to, to push the ball downfield and, and, you know, have a lot of fun doing it. I think your coach said you were sometimes out there throwing with guys at like 6 a.m. before your lifting period. How big a deal was that right away to show guys Going to put in the work. Yeah, I think that goes to show how dedicated the receivers are. Um, they want to get in work, and uh, you know I always show up for my guys if they want to get in work. So it was a lot of fun. Um, some days were rough. I'm not gonna not gonna lie to you, but you know we got it in, and you know, I, I like where we're at in the spring. Of course, everybody knows your whole life that Nebraska has been a big part of your family. Mm -hmm. So now that you're here and you're wearing wearing that gear. How has that changed your perspective on that? Honestly, I think it's it's kind of surreal, and I have a lot of gratitude to being in this university. Uh, I think it really hit the last match drill we had. It, it was at night in the stadium, and I th I just remember running out, and it was just it was just awesome to be in Memorial Stadium. Uh, you know, being a recruit, watching a game, isn't really the same as actually being in the in the stadium yourself. So. It's just been it's been surreal. It's been I'm very grateful to be where I'm at and uh, surrounded by a great group of guys and coaches. What's maybe the biggest teaching point so far that Glenn Thomas has given you that you didn't maybe know before you got here? Yeah, Coach Thomas does a great job of you know really expecting a lot out of his quarterbacks, um, and I think he sets a stand he sets a standard every day when we come in the meeting room to, to go out and practice and execute at a high level. So there's there's a lot of things that he expects out of us. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but I think just the expectation he has for us every day. Thank you, guys. Thank you.